this is a call-in show. So get your questions ready for Michael and Mary and be ready to call in because they like to hear what you have to say, what your questions are, what your comments are. The phone number is 703-663-3333. Easy enough to call. So get them ready and I'll introduce Michael and Mary. Welcome to the show. Good morning, good morning. And take over. So another month passes us by in dining and it was a busy month. Obviously, last Friday night, we had our annual gala right. downstairs at Hunter's Crossing in the Conference Center. And this theme this year was New York, New York. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we did a few little stations. We had a New York steakhouse. We had Little Italy. And then we had a Chinatown theme. And then out, and we had a beautiful dessert station set up. We had a nice seafood raw bar. And the ice sculpture was actually the Empire State Building. Wonderful. Yeah, and then we had a nice security station, and you know, each kitchen took responsibility of one of the meals. So, for the New York Steakhouse, we did a nice sirloin steak with some garlic mashed potatoes and grilled asparagus, and you had different toppings. You had a, uh, an onion jam or whiskey butter or Madeira sauce to have with that. And then we moved over to Little Italy, where we did we took whole wheels of Parmesan, carved them out. They were making the pasta, but then tossing it in the wheel itself. And then we were topping that with the lobster Newburg. Mm. That was very delicious. And then over in Chinatown, we did, for our Asian theme, we did what you call bibimbap, which is a Korean national dish. Uh, it's with some jasmine rice and mushrooms and celery and carrots, a little baby bok choy, some kimchi. You can either have some duck or tofu on there with a little chili sauce. It was delicious. So it was a really fun activity. Uh, it was totally a team effort, not just by those who participate, but we always say by those who have to, you know, s help run the venues. Mm -hmm. Because this year that was different is the Jefferson was open. Yes. So we did this whole function with all three main dining rooms open. Wow. So it was, was, it was, it was different this year. It right? was a little different. And uh, I think, you know, the one thing about this dining services team is no matter what obstacle they face or adversity, they always overcome it. And, and that's a testament to the whole team. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the staff in the kitchen, the staff in the front of the house, the managers, you know, everybody. And everybody came together to make sure that this was a successful night. And by what we're hearing back in the comments, it was. Good. So it went really well. Um, we have a few other things coming. October 4th, uh, we're doing Oktoberfest in the dining room. So you'll have one meal item to celebrate that in the dining rooms. Um, we're also doing, on the 9th, we have our birthday cakes. We do that on the uh, second Wednesday, and I think it's a great thing. We started a few years back, and you know, we'll bring in the birthday cakes and let everybody celebrate uh, if they're having a birthday in mm -hmm. October. You don't have to have a birthday in October, not to get a piece of cake. <laughs> no, it's we always have to have everybody else's cake. Right, yeah, sure. right, so why not share sure. it? Um, the lobby treats on the 23rd are going to be um, for breast cancer awareness. Mm -hmm. Obviously, October's breast cancer awareness. Um, something that we all take dear and close to our heart and uh, the lobby treat will show that when we do it on the 23rd. I can't imagine what they'll be. <laughs> it's a surprise. It's a surprise. Time to find out. <laughs> but you know we have a lot of activities going on. Um, we just last night had a very successful movie on the green. Uh, we combined that with our smokehouse barbecue. Mm -hmm. So we had some delicious barbecue. We were showing the movie Aladdin, the new one. Uh, we had some other movie treats out there, ice cream and popcorn, and it was a beautiful night it was. to see the movie besides the Nats winning their one <laughs> playoff game. So I think everybody had a good night. So a lot going on in dining. Um, and as we move into, you know, we're in October, obviously we're going to go into November and December with the holidays, and there'll be a lot of activities going on as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's keeping us busy. Okay. You're going to offer uh, special uh, cakes and stuff like that for the holidays? We will. We haven't finalized it, but like we do for Thanksgiving and for Christmas mm -hmm. through the stores. Through the we'll, stores, we'll, yeah. we'll do our uh, cake sale. I think it's been a big success, and I mm -hmm. think everybody likes it because it's easy. Mm -hmm. You know, they can, and, you know, we always look at what we sold the following year, the past year, to decide, you know, okay, what, right. what are the, you know, 
what are the residents buying and that's how we come up with our list for the next year and then we add on a couple new items just to see how they go so you'll you know you'll see those coming out um, probably we do it like a week before Thanksgiving mm -hmm. get everybody ready and then we'll probably do one you know before Christmas right. as well uh, to get everybody ready for that and and, and it's a it's a, a, a great way of us offering you know to the residents just you know make it a little easier on their life sure you know you can go there and say yeah I bake this <laughs> no one has to know right came from home it came from, it did come from home right and I know Mary wanted to go over a couple things about, um, we were talking about grapefruits and, mm -hmm. and yes, items like that. Yes, that was interesting. We yeah. made the comment beforehand about why we don't have grapefruit here. Yeah. Um, real quick though, I do want to give out a shout out to the dining team here. Um, I'm based out of Garden Ridge, so oh, the yes. continuing care community. Um, so. We had our annual state inspection come by, and which is, you know, they, you, it's unplanned visit, so it's pretty spontaneous. And the first thing they do when they walk in the door is they go directly to the kitchen because they want to find things that are wrong. Sure. Um, and they actually said that it was pristine, that they would eat off the floor if they could. And it was the first time, I mean, a lot of our employees have worked in facilities where state come for years, and it's the only time they've ever heard state inspectors say that about our team, which is a really huge accomplishment for our Dining team and Wonderful. something that yeah something that Jason our um, assistant director pointed out is that you know for a dining room to be clean you know you just can't do that all of a sudden because you know that state is coming it has to be like that all the time it has to be a practice and what happens at Garden Ridge is reflected in all of our dining rooms and all of our kitchens so it's it was a huge um, something that our whole team should be proud of because it's it's a lot of work producing three meals a day for a large amount sure of people keeping every all the temperatures correct all the cleaning correct and then you know just making it look and keeping it cleanly kind of clean clean and all the cleanliness is a big deal so we've been very proud of our dining team That's so I wanted wonderful wanna, yeah, congratulations thank you I just wanted to make sure that everyone and knew about that to piggyback off of that the one thing that also is that usually they're here for three days correct yes. they were done in two days really 1.5 yeah, really day and a half. yeah so yeah. that in itself tells you that they came in it's like can't There's find nothing anything here. to do. You know, <laughs> yeah, and, that's, and, it was and great. as Mary says, and not to steal a thunder, it is. It's a testament to that whole team and, and the great job they did and do every day. Mm -hmm. and, and she's right, it does carry over. And the one thing we're proud of is that, and this came, you know, we, we, we've always said this, we're inspection ready. It's Absolutely. not like we scramble. Right. We not only do we have Fairfax that comes in here three times a year, we also have an, our own independent. And we're the only Erickson property that does this. We have a company called UL Everclean. They're a national company. They're like a company called EcoShore. And they're an audit company. And they come in and they will audit your kitchen. And basically, it's like having the health inspector here six times a year. Mm -hmm. um, they mimic what the health inspector does. And they and come we, in without notice. They yep. will show up and you will get a call that, hey, Everclean's downstairs in my lobby. Like right then and there. Mm -hmm. So you know, it, we're always ready. And uh, we've gotten praise from them. You know, just to, most restaurants hit probably mid 70s, low 80s on their scores. Mm -hmm. We're hitting high, high 80s, low mid 90s. So it's that's it. Yeah, and, and all across the community. That's great. Mm -hmm. And we're also, and I know we've mentioned this before through Fairfax County, we're part of the STAMP program, which is a program that is awarded to very few, I think they give it out to maybe two or three facilities, maybe a year in all of Fairfax County. And it's because of our active management uh, protocol and process mm -hmm. we have in place. Um, that Fairfax County came in there, you know, they want to use us as a training facility. Um, and I remember asking our inspector, you know, I don't see you coming in here. She's like, well, she's like, you got to find things wrong when you're doing <laughs> training. And yeah. she's like, you don't have really big, they call them criticals. And we really don't have a lot of, we don't have any criticals yeah. when you think about it. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I really can't train somebody if there's nothing to train them on. So We're that's- just that good. <laughs> no, we take pride in, you yeah, know, sure. and, and, and part of it is because we want to offer the residents here the best 
dining experience. Mm -hmm. You know, we take it serious. Every precaution we take, every level that we put in yeah. to make sure things are done right. So. And going off of that, so that kind of will segue me into the grapefruit conversation. So oftentimes when I come on the show, I like to talk about something that residents are asking me a lot of questions, whether it's emails or phone calls or seeing me in the hallway. Um, recently, I had two residents uh, ask me why we don't have grapefruit in our dining room. And just building off of what Michael said, like we want to make sure that everything we do in our practices is safe for all the residents. So um, I'm sure doctors have informed the residents here that grapefruit uh, has a high strong, a high drug nutrient interaction, it's DNI, drug nutrient interaction. And basically what that means is with certain medications, when you take grapefruit, it'll prevent the drug from being as effective or it'll let the drug into your body way too much. And I did bring a couple of slides to kind of show this. So um, grapefruit can block the enzyme, which then allows too much drug into the body. So like the breaking down of it, like the enzyme that will then metabolize it better to get it you know, right out of your system won't be working. So then it'll be in your system very strongly, which isn't good. Yeah. Uh, or it can have the exact opposite effect. It will um, let too much, uh, too little of that drug into your body. So it'll be blocked. Um, it'll be blocked and be metabolized too quickly, depending on the type of drug that you have. So it's very popular with statins, so anything to lower your cholesterol, you don't want to take any grapefruit with that, grapefruit juice, nothing at all. Um, it's common with high blood, high blood pressure, so blood pressure medication. Um, and there are a couple of other ones that are a little bit more um, not as popular in, the, in what residents have to take, but high cholesterol and high blood pressure medication is just very common in this population. So to keep everybody safe, we don't have grapefruits on the menu available. And this isn't even community-wide, it is corporate-wide. And if you go to hospitals, hospitals don't even have this. So that is the reason that you know grapefruit are, is not on campus and that's not sold in our dining rooms. So now, if they want grapefruit, they need to go to the store and yeah, buy grapefruit. Yeah, their store. And, and keep it in their and apartment. Keep it in their apartment. Yeah. Under lock and key. <laughs> Under lock and key. And check with your doctor first to make sure you're not on a drug or a medication right. that could be affecting it because it would could lead to kidney failure, liver failure if you have too much of a drug in your system, or it could prevent a drug from working. So if you're on high blood pressure medication and you take you take too much grapefruit juice and it prevents your blood like the blood pressure from being monitored mm -hmm. you, I mean I don't want to sound like really depressing but you know you don't want to have a stroke because of that or you right. don't want to have something of that nature happen so it's a something that we can do to actually assist our residents uh, and I had that conversation with, um, with one of our residents here and her next question was why can't we just have grapefruit out with a little sign saying you know basically beware kind of thing and which is a great idea however you know like we may forget the medications we're on or if it's if we put out a sign that says hey if you're on a statin don't take this medication. And some people don't know what a statin yeah, is. Yeah, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm on a statin, but I know I'm on this drug. And then all of a sudden, you know, you could be. And you're open yourself up to, to you risk. Know, risk. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And another thing is, you don't necessarily want to share that information with all the residents in the dining room. Exactly. Like, why aren't you having this grapefruit? And it just puts everybody at risk. And it's something that we can do to be safer in this community and just in this population in general. So, and again, even hospitals don't do this. I mean, yeah. don't have grapefruit available. But you can have it in your individual uh, <laughs> apartments. Yeah, you won't see grapefruit juice or anything like that. Right. You know, it won't be in any of the recipes. It won't right. be cooked in. And we won't have grapefruit available as like a side fruit. So it's for the safety of everybody. Good, okay. good, okay. Very good. So and another item you won't see is our bean sprouts. Oh? Yeah, we don't bring bean sprouts in because they're very susceptible to um, foodborne illnesses. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, just by the way they're grown. So the smart decision was not even to bring them in. We can't order them. They're not available to us to order. So you won't see any of those anywhere. And I know a lot of residents, you know, some like them and why can't we get bean sprouts? And it's mm -hmm. more for the protection of the community than anything. So there's a lot of things we do, you know. So bean sprouts are the kind of thing that uh can cause some problems. I mean, well, just the way it, they're grown. Or? It's it's more the handling, and if you sometimes you'll see that a lot of times with foodborne illnesses, bean sprouts is um, one of the main ones. Mm -hmm. So that's why we just you know remove it from any opportunity. 
Um, so we actually got a question from a resident. Okay. It was hand delivered. So that's <laughs> even that's amazing. Awesome. The phone system's not yeah. working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so the question is, why is orange juice and oranges okay if grapefruit isn't? So grapefruit specifically, if we want to get into the nitty gritty of it, there's an enzyme called, I wrote it down, it's CYP3A4. And specifically, grapefruit has something that will either prevent that enzyme from working or, or block it. Um, so that is why grapefruit is different than oranges. Now, oranges do not affect that enzyme the way that grapefruit does. So even though they are both citrus fruits, the way that they interact with that specific enzyme mm -hmm. in our body is different. So hopefully that good answers question. the question. Yes. Yeah, it is a great question. question. And, then, and you know, it's not just oranges, it's all fruit. You know, every, every fruit we have in here, where it's, it's safe, based off of you know what What's science has now. proven yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. even though we do have other citrus fruits available um, it's specifically because grapefruit interacts with that specific enzyme in our body that will affect how our medications work so thank you for the question Good question yeah. yes yeah. okay so uh, there's a way to get your questions in here so don't hesitate to call there's also one other thing I forgot to mention the Jefferson and the Bistro are having their town hall meeting, and that's going to be October 28th, and that's from noon to 1 p.m. in the Village Square Theater. Okay. And, uh, you know, I always tell people, you know, we have town halls, and then we also have the larger, um, like, workshops we'll have, where it will be Jason and myself, and we, when Ty was the dining director. And the town halls are geared more towards the individual venue. If you have a question about that venue, where the workshop or the work group, you know, the larger meeting that we have, um, when the dining department has their meeting, that's more the big picture. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll do that. I think it's once a quarter we do it in the Village Square Theater as well. So that's where we talk about the program on the whole. We'll talk about construction. We'll talk about you know the new like we have this new now you can take your food to you know mm -hmm. home that wasn't an individual venue that was a department so that's how we you know negotiate navigate through those meetings again we also have the mix and mingle again a great opportunity for residents to come meet the leadership and just any questions they have right this you know this call and show so we try to use every uh venue you know every I guess communication piece available to us uh, we do our comic cards we do I know that Jason has his call-in show his show as well so you know we, we try to use every avenue available for us I know so often I'll hear people say something about you know oh that was a wonderful meal and I'll say well did you make a comic card well no I said that's what they want to hear right you know, they want to hear the good things as well as the bad and you know the other way too is if they and say, "Oh, that was." And I have it. I have. I actually like have it under here because I have my dress clothes on today. It's Wednesday, <laughs> but we're doing the survey. We all know resident survey goes to the sixteenth. I just wrote you a note to say that. And um, <laughs> you know when we say take the survey for me, mm -hmm. we're talking about, and it's for everybody. I'm not just talking dining. I'm talking in housekeeping, in security, in maintenance, in communication, you know, people behind the scenes you don't see mm -hmm. in everyday life. You know, there's a lot to goes on in this community. And like you said, you know, I think residents sometimes are like, well, everything's fine. Well, let us know that. Yeah. You know, don't wait till something goes wrong to like, well, give me one of those comic but cards. Be specific I'm specific too. Right. Be you know, specific. and on the comic cards, I mean, on the survey, do the scoring, but then there's a section for comments. If you mm -hmm. want to write in something detailed, you have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But we're really serious about take the survey for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, take it for, you know, that server who knows what you drink every single night, mm -hmm. doesn't have to ask you. Pretty much knows, you know, who the, the communication specialist that, you know, pretty much knows what you're coming up to talk to or, you know, housekeeping that takes care of, of everything, the lobbies and everything. Maybe they help out in your apartment. The maintenance, you know, if they come in, you have a problem with your dishwasher or something like that. There, there, there's, you know, there's security. You know, they do a phenomenal job. There's so yeah. many departments around here. And well, I know that the whole office of people working down in Forest View that nobody ever sees. I see them come and go simply because I live down on that floor. But, you know, you just have no idea what they're doing. Mm -hmm. 
But they're obviously busy. <laughs> Over in Garden Ridge, yes. there are so many offices. There, you know, medical mm -hmm. transcripts and and volunteers uh, volu programming. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't see them, right. but there's right. a lot of work that goes on a behind the scene. Work. And, and that's who we're asking you to take the survey for. Right. And then you, something else about the survey, Michael, that we've been talking about is that you don't want to just take it based off of one experience, but your right. overall experience right. at Green right. Springs, so your overall dining experience, your mm -hmm. overall di uh, you know, experience with housekeeping or sure. maintenance. So not just based off of one particular meal that you had, but right. overall, how have you been enjoying this experience? And mm -hmm. you know, write comments, additional comments if you want. And also, listen, you don't have to, you, we have a lot of construction going on. And I yes. know that, and I know that puts <laughs> a bad taste in some people's mouths, but we, that's, you know, we're dealing with it. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. remember we had one kitchen closed and that whole team was cooking in one kitchen for eight months and, and bringing it over, transporting right. over right. every meal. Right. So whatever hardship you can imagine, probably <laughs> three, four times on, on the team. Yeah. So but the end result is going to be well worth it but again when it comes to the you know construction we didn't all of a sudden decide to stand up and say you know let's break these walls down and all that you know so what i'm saying you know let's be fair when we do the resident survey and and, and i think look at the the service that the team in this community provides mm -hmm. you know and i i think from top to bottom side to side do a phenomenal job you know, it's like a cruise ship on land, I tell people. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, my grandkids say it's like a college campus without such classes. It <laughs> is. That's how know. I describe it to people as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, just a side question, if you don't have anything else pressing to talk about. Tell me about this new dining room that's going in. Oh. So, we have the Corgan Four coming in. Now, I don't know exact date. I know, you know, there's going to be a lot of, you know, anticipation, but... We're, I know it's right now set for lunch and dinner, and what we're looking at is a revolving menu, like every quarter, and maybe doing a theme. Maybe we start off with like a Mediterranean theme, mm -hmm. or maybe after that we go to an Asian fusion theme. Uh, then after that, maybe we go to, you know, uh, a Latin theme or South American. Or Are the hours going to be the same as the other dining rooms? Right now, that has not been determined. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm not, you know, I don't want to give answer either way, mm -hmm. um, but I can tell you, you know, it'll be another venue offering. A lot um, of us have been wondering, you know, why do we need another dining room? Mm -hmm. Well, I think through a lot of the resident surveys, um, variety has been number one, you know, and I think what you're going to see is these huge dining rooms are going to start going away where if I can give you an option of, instead of one dining room offering one menu, huge dining room, I can give you three dining rooms that offer three different menus, so now there's your variety. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna go to Cork and Fork because I don't know, Wednesday night is steak night or, mm -hmm. or whatever. That looks like it's gonna be a huge dining room. The Where's Cork it located Fork, actually, Michael? It's like right it. upstairs in the media room yeah, looks at like Town it's Center. Looks like it's um, gonna be they're huge. They're gonna have an outside seating. So I think all total, it's gonna be maybe 80 seats, 100 seats. It's mm -hmm. not going to be like the size of a Jefferson or a Woodland or a Fireside. Because it's taking over, what, three rooms up there? Yeah, and it's going to be really nice. You know, we have a lot of plans. This is going to be an opportunity for those in the culinary department to, like, spread their wings. You know, yeah. you know we're going to give them the chance. You know, those, of, those who attended the culinary competition, mm -hmm. you saw a little taste of what we really want to do in Cork and Fork. It seems to me like we need a place that's open like until 10 o'clock at night. You know, where people could go get a cup of coffee and a dessert. Right. Or, you know, get a late drink or whatever. Right. Um, I, I don't know what the plans are for that. You know, I don't want to get into the discussion mm -hmm. because I really don't want to, like, get people's, you know, well, get we heard up. Michael said, you <laughs> know. <laughs> and they would hold you to they it. They <laughs> would, and they'd be walking into someone's <laughs> office. Michael said, you're going to have a late night, you know, ice cream shop here. I'm like, no. No. <laughs> so, um, really, operating hours haven't been determined. Um, we're still playing around with the menu, um, but we did utilize the culinary competition as, you know, a starting ground. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there were some great plates there, and, and that was from the line staff. And uh, 
I think giving them the opportunity to shine, you know, this is your restaurant. What do you want to do? Tell me what you want to do. Uh -huh. So I, I think it's going to be a great venue. You know, there's a lot of plans moving forward. Um, I know we're not stopping with town center. You know, each building is going to be getting a little repositioning. So, so I, we're going to be torn up for a long time. I wouldn't say a long <laughs> time, but. We're going to no. look great in the end, though. Oh, I know. Well, well, I, and, and, I think and I think the construction people have done a fabulous job of trying to keep it <coughs> neat. Yeah. yeah, well, it's imagine you're building right in the middle of a small hamlet. Yeah. You know, yeah. and people are going, you know, going here, going there, people coming in to go to work and all that. So <coughs> it's not easy. You no. have this big construction equipment coming in, getting deliveries, but uh, it's like the fireside kitchen. You know, once we we're done, right. people are like, wow, this is a nice kitchen. Yeah. You know, we have people from other communities visiting. They're like, they're a little bit jealous. Mm -hmm. They're a lot jealous, I'll be honest. And um, how'd you get this done? And like, this is something we really wanted and we stuck to our guns. And, you know, I think the big thing is that we're providing the team a safe environment, a healthy environment, yeah. an environment where they can grow. Mm -hmm. You know, and also in the, in, the, in the same time, we're also providing a great dining experience to the residents. Okay. We're down to the last minute. If you have any last words of wisdom. Happy Halloween. Happy <laughs> Halloween, right? Let's see if we can get Michael to dress up on the 31st. I don't know about that. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And if you run into Mary or, or Michael in the hallway, stop and greet them and let them know you appreciate their work or have a, have a word of advice or something for them. If you have a suggestion, they're always open to it. <laughs>